All right, in this tutorial, we're gonna look at Vanishing Point and playing around with that filter in Photoshop. It's a great little tool to keep certain aspects in perspective, but we have to set up the grid first. So here I have a beautiful picture of an alleyway that I'm gonna play around with a little bit. So what I'm gonna do first is create a new layer. So even though we're in this area, when we go to the Vanishing Point and filter, it's going to be able to actually put those things that we make in Vanishing Point on new layers, and I'll show you that in just a little bit. So let's start with this. I'm gonna create a new layer go to filter and vanishing point what I want to do first off the bat is I want to create my grids so there's a few tools here the only one active right now is this grid tool one of the most important ones create plane tool. Now, this is important because setting this up will help you date make all your other changes and decisions later if you have a good grid setup it's easy to work with if you have to fine-tune it later it's a bit of a pain but either way what I tend to do normally is make a huge grid but instead I'm just gonna make a simple grid that keeps my perspective. So I'm going to make a grid on this plane, on this plane, and on this plane. So it's going to be a three-point perspective. What I want to do is I'm going to just click on the window. So I'm going to click on the bottom window here. And I'm just going to drag it up over here to this window. Bring it over here to this window. Bring it down. Now, if I had to zoom in, I could zoom in, but I'm doing pretty good here. And I'm just going to click and drag, and there's my grid. Now, it just shows the grid is just for that window. No, the grid is actually going to be here, because watch what I can do now. With these individual little anchor points, I can drag it out. And I can drag it up. So I only have to make a small perspective selection. And now what's going to happen is it's going to keep that in line with the rest of this picture. There we go. Perfect. And I'm going to make another one here now as well. I'm going to click on this grid again, and I'm going to make another selection with these windows. Let's try this to here. Now, as you can see, there's different colors we're working with as well. Now, this one goes a little bit further out, but as I do that, what happens is it's blue. Now, if I change it up and click and drag, watch what happens if I make it where it's not a good grid. See, it turned red. Red is no good. Yellow is better. Blue is the best. So we want to find a grid line that even Photoshop understands as saying, yes, this is a good grid and we like it. So now that I'm happy with that, I'm just going to click it down. Not bad. I'm going to drag it over. And once again, we could always fine tune the individual corners just by clicking on them. And I'm just going to go oh, and I'm just going to drag this one out. And here we are, I'm going to drag it up. And now that's going to make my full perspective of the whole building. And I can drag it out this way too. Okay, I'm going to make one more grid selection. And I'm going to just do from here to here to here. I'm going to zoom out, Command minus. And I'm going to go around to here. And then I'm looking good right about there. Oh, it's red, so that's not as good. So I'm just going to try to fine tune it and find a blue area that would work better. So let me try to find that blue area that it likes. Ah, there we go. So it's liking, that's yellow. There is a blue area that's good. And I could extend it back if I want to as well. There we go. So I have my three grids, my three perspective grids set up. And now I'm not just gonna say, okay. So now what I can do is I can actually start working with that grid a little bit more and play around with um, bringing in some objects. I can start playing with some of the tools here as well. So the first thing I want to do in this grid, I'm going to go actually back to it. I'm going to go, because pressing OK sets the grid. It's good to go. If I said cancel, I'm going to go back to it, filter and vanishing point. If I press cancel, it would have not saved the grids. But because I pressed OK, it saved the grids. I don't have to make them again, which is great. So now what I can do with my uh, selection tool and we'll see what happens on this grid. See when I hover over the grid, it actually shows that grid, it highlights that grid. Even with this grid here, I feel I need to fix it up a little bit, bring it up over here. I'm going to select this window here. If I select it, yeah, see what happens? My selection is in perspective. Look at that, very nice. Now what I can do here, I say I wanna duplicate this window. In the vanishing point frame here, the uh, dialogue here, this big workspace, I'm just gonna hold down Option, Click and drag, and look what happens. It keeps it in perspective, no matter where it is on the grid. Look at that. So it'll always stay in perspective. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna bring it over here for whatever reason. Okay, the Command D, deselects, and now I have another window in perspective. It blends it in very nicely. I'm gonna do the same thing here, but I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna select this window, 
But this time, instead of holding Option, I'm going to hold Command. Now watch what Command does. It's kind of like the patch tool. It allows you to select other pixels and fill them in. Command D. Now obviously I did a very poor job with that, but just to show you that holding Option will duplicate it. Holding Command will let you fill the pixels, that selection in with pixels around the area. So that's kind of a fun thing to do there too. And I'm just going to press OK to save those settings. But remember, those settings are now on, or those images, pixels are on the layer. I can shut them off. Turn them back on. I can edit them here, delete it, mask it out, do whatever I want. But now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make a new layer again, but this time I'm going to do some clone stamping. A new layer, click on vanishing point, and now what I can do is click on the clone stamp. Now on this side here, I'm going to, just like we know with clone stamp, we have to hold down option first and select an area, the target area that we want to paint from. Now here I have all my options here for the brush. I can make the diameter smaller, make the hardness soft, or make the brush harder soft, change the opacity, let me, I'll bring the opacity down a little bit, maybe 75, uh, the hardness, maybe I'll bring down to the full softness, and I'm just gonna play around. So what I can do now is just paint, and look at that. It will also take my clone stamp and keep it in perspective. Let's get rid of some of these two over here. Keep it in perspective. Look at that, very nice. Okay, so you could also clone stamp in perspective, which is really good too. All right, so that is an option too. I'm going to say okay, and look what happened. Once again, if I don't like it, I could delete it. I could or, or subtract it, delete it, uh, make it invisible, come back to it later, whatever I want to do. But I could also clone stamp and select things in perspective when I'm in the vanishing point. The next thing I want to do is I want to play around with. Um, bringing in some type and seeing how we could play around with that type. So I'm going to make a type layer. So I'm just going to click on the type and just type it anywhere. It doesn't matter. So I'm just going to type in market and we're going to put a sign on the wall. So there's market. What I want to do, I'm not actually going to use this. I'm going to use it. I'm not going to use it. You'll see what I mean. So I'm going to select this type, just the type. If I press command and click on the T on the type layer, it selects just the type. It made a selection. I'm going to copy it. Command C. I'm also going to now unselect it, Command D, and hide that layer. I'm going to make a new layer, and I'm going to go to Filter, Vanishing Point, and I'm just going to Command V. And look what shows up in the top corner. Now this is a little tricky because it's hard to see, but it shows up there in the top corner. Now watch what happens as I drag it over my grids. It'll stay in perspective. If I want the perspective down here, as I drag it over each individual grid, it stays in perspective. All right, so I'm just going to drop it here for a bit. I'm happy with that. But now I'm going to press Command T. Say, oh, I want it a little bit bigger. Command T, which is free transform. Now I can make it bigger. I can play around with the size of it. I can do whatever I want. All right, there I go. And once again, it free transforms in perspective. And that's it. Now I'm going to press OK. And now there it is. Once again, I could play around with it, do whatever. Now, the only thing I could not figure out how to do is how to get back into Vanishing Point and play around with that again if I want to move it around again. I, I don't know how to do that. I don't think you're actually able to. What you have to do is probably start all over again, select it, uh, copy it, uh, Command-D, and then uh, deselect it, obviously, and make a new layer and start all over again. But either way, there is my tool. Now what I could do with that, play, make it play around in there a little bit better. I can overlay it to make it seem like it was kind of an old um, sign that used to be there and now it's no longer there or, or whatever the case may be. Play around with it a little bit there as well. The last thing I want to do is if we ever needed to, I'm going to make a new layer once again. I'm going to go to Filter and Vanishing Point and I'm just going to click on this little area down next to the uh, Move tool. And I could actually take my grids, render grids to Photoshop, OK, and actually actually put my grids into Photoshop as its own layer. If I ever needed them to use them to help me lay things out here in um, Photoshop, not the actual vanishing point uh, workspace, but just in Photoshop, I could do that as well. OK, so there's a lot of play and a lot of different fun things you could do with vanishing point. And I hope that helps.